So you guys would not believe exactly how many people per month search how to save money across Google and YouTube alike. They're searching how to save money and there's all these articles and videos out there that show you exactly how to do just that. Yet people are still searching how to save money. Even I've made several YouTube videos on the topic of how to save money. And the feedback I've gotten is, well, everybody can't do that, or, well, I don't make that much money, so I can't save, or my favorite, well, I know how to save money, but I don't make a lot of money, so therefore I can't save. And this is what this video is about, how to save money with low income. I'm about to blow your mind, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to save money on a low salary. Keep watching. So the reason I'm able to make this video with confidence is because I have been there. I've had a low salary. I've had close to minimum wage and I know what it's like to be like that, but I never let the mindset of, oh, well, I don't make enough stop me from saving because I've always had a goal. And that's what I want to encourage everybody watching this video to do right now is to have a goal. Right when I graduated from college, my goal was to not have to depend on a single family member or anything. So I had to start thinking ahead. I thought, how would a couple thousand dollars in my savings account help me after graduating? Now keep in mind, when I say minimum wage, I'm not just talking about the traditional $7.25. I'm talking about whatever the lowest tier person in your workplace or company makes. That could be $15 an hour, that could be $14 an hour, $12 an hour. For me, it was $8.75 an hour, you know what I'm saying? That is what I also mean by minimum wage. So as I mentioned before, my primary goal after graduating from college was to not have to move back in with my parents and not to rely on any family member for any type of financial stability whatsoever. And of course, I didn't really start getting serious about my after graduation fund until my senior year of college where I earned my first job of a student research assistant earning $10 per hour. And in the off season, like any holiday breaks, I would work at a local grocery store stocking groceries, making $8.75 an hour. So obviously that's not crazy money, right? So I had to plan ahead. So the first thing I did was I had to keep my bills low. So obviously most college students have roommates. I had three of them. There were four of us in a townhouse. We each paid $435 per month. So honestly, we just split rent and utilities. And utilities was no more than $28 per month for each of us because we didn't stay in the house like that because we were crazy college students going any and everywhere. Doing this, I was able to leverage the cost of living, which by the way, I was on the East Coast at this time and the East Coast is significantly cheaper than the West Coast where I live now. To put it into perspective, 435 times four is still less than what I pay for right now for my single bedroom apartment. Yes, we're talking about a four people bedroom townhouse costs less than a one bedroom apartment. Just to give you an example. So, so if you can leverage the cost of living on wherever you live. On top of this, the summer prior to coming back to school, senior year, I worked at an internship which paid me about $20 an hour. And that was full time, but most of it honestly went towards rent because at the time I wanted to see what it was like to live on my own and not have to rely on anybody financially. And I figured that $20 an hour with an $1,100 rent by myself would be suffice, and it was but I could have saved a lot more if I would have just been smarter and got a roommate, but we're not even gonna go there. But that was the first lesson I learned was to have roommates. As I was learning this harsh lesson, I also learned to just put as much money away as possible. So basically I ate ramen noodles and pop tarts all day, went to work, you know, ate chicken pot pie TV dinners and stuff like that. And I really just acted like I was broke when I wasn't and I put as much money away as possible because that was where my goal formed that initially was when I was at home thinking to myself, huh, I should probably start putting money away for graduation so I'm not broke and asking mom and dad for any kind of money that I can possibly get. I don't want to be that guy. I'm not that guy. You know what I'm saying? So something else I did outside of just putting money away, I also made sure that my car that costed $6,000 was fully paid off so that I knew that I wouldn't have to worry about any car payments after graduating. So I just really kept a low overhead at the time. 
my family insisted on continuing to pay my cell phone bills, so I, I, I let them do it. And I was like, well, I guess this gives me a chance to put some more money away. So after I graduate, I can be like, nope, give me that cell phone bill. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what I really wanted to think. And I was really in the mindset of my family will never buy me anything for school, not books, nothing. I don't care what it is, I'm going to pay for it myself. Not books, not computers, not nothing. I bought everything with my own money. I just let them continue to pay my phone bill and my health insurance, and that was it. And it was easy to do because I was already under their health insurance plan, so that just made it that much easier. On top of the whole car thing, my roommates and I, we all had cars, so we just took turns driving cars, but we really refrained from driving as much as possible. Honestly, we just took the bus to and from campus, to and from work. Whenever we could, we did it. But any other time we need to go to the grocery store or something that didn't necessarily have as much uh, busing ability, we just went ahead and drove there, but we took turns doing so. And that saved us a lot of money on gas as well. Also in regards to keeping bills low, I didn't pay for Netflix, I didn't pay for Hulu, I didn't pay for Amazon, I didn't get any unnecessary streaming services that I didn't need because I needed to focus on school anyways. So those are other things that kept me ahead of the game because it's like all my friends had Netflix and Hulu and all these and all these other things, but it's like, do you need that though? And it's unnecessary cost at the time. Now, once you get a job and you get stable and you have good income coming in, yeah, that's when it's time to reward yourself and spend money on stuff to relax. In my opinion, if you haven't reached your financial goals yet, you should not be spending money on completely unnecessary things. You know what I mean? All right, so next, I had to learn how to save money on groceries. Yes, groceries, I did not eat out at all. I, all I did was grocery shopped and cooked all the time. Maybe on a few special occasions, maybe if I was going on a date or something, that was the only time I would really eat out. And even then, I would not spend that much money. I wouldn't go over $25 per person whenever I would eat out because I had a goal to reach. When my roommates and I would go to the grocery store, we wouldn't spend over 70 bucks each time because again, we were smart with it. We got dry foods, we got canned foods, we got oatmeal, rice vegetables, frozen foods, eggs, chicken, basic stuff, sandwich meat, like peanut butter and jelly. We ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches like there was no tomorrow because we had a certain goal and we, we were technically broke college kids, right? So you, we couldn't really afford to do much more than that anyways, but just having that discipline is step number one to being able to put some money away despite whatever your wages are. All right, so this is definitely a mindset shift in itself. Don't let the amount of money you make per hour affect your attitude about your ability to save money. Because if you do, that's the end of it right there. You're gonna say, well, I only make $8 an hour, I only make $10 an hour, I only make $15 an hour. How am I supposed to save money? When you start thinking like that, it starts making sense to you and you start habitually doing things that hinder you from saving the very money that you want to save. So here's something I want to give you. I'm going to give you some mindset real quick. Listen up. As I said before, I was a student research assistant in college making $10 an hour. And that was a great job. I got to control my hours. I got to work from home. I got to work wherever I wanted to, honestly. And I could max out my hours, which the max hours you can possibly work at the time was 26 hours. Couldn't work any more than that, but I maxed it out every single time. So, so I really took the opportunity that I was given. I didn't have to work that many hours, but I did. And keep in mind, I was doing extracurricular stuff and I was doing school, but I made sure I put as many hours in as possible at work so I could make the most money possible and put 110% into my work. Just by having this attitude and really going all in on what I could possibly go all in on, I was able to pretty much bank every single paycheck that I got, which was no more than about $200. But that adds up quick when you're just banking all of it. So I was able to put away an easy $1,000 just off of that. And keep in mind, if you're wondering how did I pay for my rent and how I paid for everything else, well, like I said, during my internship, I put away a lot of money. But on top of that, grants and scholarships pretty much covered my entire last year of college, and I only had to spend like $1,000 
in, uh, in student loans to cover my final year in college. So with that said, anything else I had, which was the money I got from my internship, as well as money that I saved up from my student researcher job, I was able to put away a good amount of money with both of those put together. It was about three, $4,000, give or take, by the end of the year. And this basically came off the motivation of, I want to help my family out. I don't want them to feel like they're always stretched to financially support me. Like I want to be able to financially support them. And guess what? Now I'm able to do that because of the ideologies that I mentioned in the beginning and because of the mindset and, and the methods that I mentioned in the beginning, such as keeping bills low and saving money on food. Those are the top two things that people's money goes to. So if you just cut those two costs, you'd be able to save a lot more money that way than if you didn't. This one's a game changer. Leverage your extra money for your future, not for your wants, but for your future. Here's what I mean. So typically around March or so, everyone gets a tax return whenever you file your taxes, right? Most people see that money. It could be a grand, it could be two grand, three grand, or it could be a few hundred dollars, wherever you fall in that margin. When people see that, they're like, oh man, I'm about to get a new pair of shoes. I'm about to get a new car even. I'm about to just splurge. That is the wrong way to think. In most of my videos regarding saving, I talk about how most Americans can't afford a $1,000 emergency. Yet a lot of Americans get over $1,000 on their tax refund. And you're telling me you can't put some of that $1,000 towards your $1,000 emergency fund? You have to spend all of it? You see what I'm saying? So, so that's the mindset you want to have. Whatever extra money I get that I wasn't initially expecting, whether it's a whether it's a bonus at work, a raise at work, tax refund, or more recently the stimulus package that everyone who makes under seventy five thousand dollars is going to get twelve hundred dollars to themselves, non taxable. What are you going to do with that money? You can either do two things that actually makes financial sense. You can save it, or you can invest it. Investing is not always guaranteed. So if you're on a low income and you're having trouble saving money, I would recommend banking that 1200 if you don't absolutely need it for other things. I know a lot of families are negatively impacted by this pandemic, whether it's financially or just stress-based. Either way, people are impacted by it. So I get that if you have to use that whole stimulus package to cover bills or overhead or whatever the case is. But if you're one of those few people who still has work, who still has income coming in, I challenge you to bank that 1200 because you don't need to just mindlessly spend it. Once again, another game changer. Use your current situation as motivation. So if you're not happy with the amount of money you're making, if you're not happy with the fact that you have to rely on others financially like I once was, and if you're just overall unhappy, figure out a way to increase your income. Figure out a way to use your current situation as motivation to propel yourself forward, whether that's reaching all your savings goals or whether that's making it to where you increase your income so it's easier to sustain your saving goals and just keep your habits on track. Usually it's not the money you make, it's the money you keep and you keep the money that you keep based off of the habits that you have, your spending habits. So all you have to do is control you and control your finances and you can control your life. That's why my whole motto on this channel is control you, control your finances, control your life. They all go together. They all have to coincide in order for you to be successful. You know, a lot of us just kind of curl into a ball and allow our reality to just consume us, but you do not have to accept your reality. You can change it. It ain't going to happen overnight, but if you're one of those people who makes a very low wage and you live by yourself, you can change that. You can move in with roommates. Literally, it's not that hard. Or even you can move in with your parents or whatever the case is, you have options we're just not always taking those options because maybe we feel ashamed or maybe we feel like we, we're not good enough or maybe we feel like we don't have that social status. But, but let me tell you something. I'm not in the business of impressing people that I don't even know or care about, quite frankly. I'm in the business of controlling myself so I can reach my financial goals. And I really challenge anybody watching this video to have the same exact mentality around money. And because of stuff like this, you'll be able to do stuff like build an emergency fund, which I have another video about that if you wanna click up here and check it out. It's a great video and it shows how I was able to save over $10,000 in just under a year. And it can be done by anybody. There's nothing special about what I did. There's nothing, there was no rocket science there was no rocket science behind what I did. All I did was had a mindset, discipline, and I just executed.
and I didn't do a whole lot of rabbit holing down the internet on how to save more, how to save more. Like, sure, I read a few articles, but after that, I just execute. So I want you guys to do the same thing so you can reach your goals. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I'm Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal growth and personal finance so that you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you got value out of this video. Check out my other videos and if you liked this video, hit the like button and please hit subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching.